If you didn't know, May is National Foster Care Awareness Month and the goal to recognize families and professionals who help children find permanent homes. And this is so important. Yes. There are nearly 4,000 kids currently in foster care in the state of South Carolina. Roughly a third have been in the state's care for more than two years. WMBF News anchor Erica Edwards shares one couple story who grew their family through adoption and breaks down how you can become an adoptive parent. Hey, sit up nicely. A beautiful family. Love one another. Created by love. I love you. But it wasn't always love that me. way. The saying that you don't know what you've got till it's gone really is true. Love each other sweetly. Lacey Hines. Megan! And her husband, John, recall the moments they decided to grow their family through adoption. When we got married, John and I didn't think we wanted children at all and then we had a miscarriage. We could not grow our family in a traditional way, and we explored the idea of foster care and adoption because that's what we felt God calling us to do. Woohoo! The Hines began the process to get licensed to foster and adopt through the South Carolina Department of Social Services, a process that requires work and time. We have an application. Don Barton, director of permanency at DSS, says there are a number of steps all potential adoptive parents need to complete in order to get licensed. There is a um, pre-service training. It's a 14-hour pre-service training. Of course, you have to have all your criminal background checks, so FBI, SLED, Sex Offender, Central Registry. In addition to the 14-hour training and background checks, Barton says families also need multiple references and a medical exam. If you have pets or other kids in your home, you need to show proof of their vaccinations. And then you can start the process of a home study, which Barton says is completed by a certified investigator and is essentially a picture of your life story and why you want to adopt. It's an extensive process. I mean, these are our children who have had to experience the foster care system have had an incredible amount of trauma. Um, and we want to make sure that we have um, done our, our due diligence by trying to match them with the best possible family. Go faster. The Hines say it took them about a year to complete their licensing process, and they fostered a few different children before they were called to the hospital about their son Levi. I picked him up and I looked at John and I was like, our lives are never going to be the same. I don't know how I knew that, but I did. All right, turn back this way. And they were never the same. Since finalizing Levi's adoption, <laughs> the Hines also adopted three-year-old Annabelle and five-year-old Dottie Mae. The Hines adopted their children as infants, but Barton says the need is for adoptive families for older children. Our tween and teen population, I would say, um, the children and youth who tend to linger in foster care and may or may not successfully fi find permanency are anywhere from 12 to that 17-year-old age range. The majority of the 166 legally free and waiting children that we have today are um, in that age range. Barton says one of the most important things for potential adoptive parents is patience and understanding. They're expecting that family to give up on them. They are absolutely expecting them to get, give up on them as, as early as possible. They may begin to experience some behaviors that you've never seen before. And it's because they, they want to be sure that you're in it forever because they've never experienced that during their time in foster care. What happens to children who grew up in the foster care system, who never got permanency, who never found a forever home, what tends to happen, I guess, after that? Unfortunately, as much as it, it aches my every bone in my body to say it, a lot of them end up homeless. Some of them end up in our in our criminal system. Um, a variety of things. While the road to building a family through love might not be easy, the destination makes it worth every step. It is scary, but it is exciting and it is wonderful and you will never regret it. Come on, Leva. <laughs> if you'd like to learn more about how you can start the process of getting licensed to adopt through the state, you can find a link in this story on our website, wbfnews.com. In the studio, Erica Edwards, WBF News.